What's up, Small Homers? My name's Aaron, and this video is part one of my two-part WLED controller comparison series. In this video, we're gonna focus on nine of the more basic WLED controllers that are out there. And in the next video, we're gonna look at a bunch of more advanced controllers. I'm gonna walk you through each one of them, spending more time on some than others, but trying to give you a good idea of how they work and which one is best for your project. Don't forget that I've left links to each one of these in the description, and if you use those links, I get a little commission which really helps out the channel, and it's no additional cost to you. The first one is the Atom LS4P, and this one's an ESP8266 based controller for WLED. You've probably seen this in my previous WLED video because it's been my go-to controller for a long time. It has screw terminals for five to 24 volts DC power, and it can handle a max current of 16 amps with a built-in fuse and surge protection. It has outputs for ground, data, and VCC for connecting an addressable LED strip, but it also has a clock output because it can handle multiple types of LED strip. It also has a button on the side which controls the internal relay. Pressing the button toggles that relay which is what's passing power through to the LED strip. Like I mentioned, my first ever WLED video I made using this controller. So if you want to see how it works in detail, how to wire it up, things like that, I've made that video so go check that out. The one downside to this controller is that it does have an ESP8266 microcontroller where nowadays the more modern controllers are using an ESP32, which has more memory and so can support more complicated LED effects, especially if you're trying to use an LED matrix. For this reason, I use it only for more simple LED projects, but a single LED matrix is fine powered by this thing. Connecting this device to WLED is gonna be the same for all the controllers that we're looking at in this video. And pretty much when you give power to the controller, it's gonna broadcast a Wi-Fi access point. You connect to that, and then it will give you an option to enter your Wi-Fi credentials. Once you do that, now it's on your Wi-Fi and you can connect to it with the WLED app or you can connect to it directly in a web browser. When I originally got these, they weren't able to be automatically updated via Home Assistant, but as you can see here, I can update this thing to the latest version of WLED with no issues. Next, we have another Atom controller and this one is a bit beefier. It has screw terminals for five to 24 volts DC input just like the last one, but it also has a built-in DC barrel jack. You'll also see this other port on the end, which is for adding an IR receiver. This allows you to add the optional IR receiver so you can control it with a remote. On the other side, you can see that it actually has two LED outputs rather than one like the previous one did. Those are screw terminals and that's how you connect those LED strips. We have a button on the top this time, which controls the relay for power to both fused outputs. And inside this thing, we have a microphone. This controller is running a special sound reactive fork of WLED, so you can get sound reactive effects that react to the sound that the microphone picks up. However, this isn't the main version of WLED, so you do not want to update this device via Home Assistant, or it's going to wipe out that sound reactive version, and you're going to have standard WLED. It's ESP32 based instead of ESP8266 like the last one, so it should have a lot more memory for handling larger effects. Also, the sound reactive fork of WLED requires you to have an ESP32. There is no option for ESP8266. Like I mentioned before, this one connects just the same way. You connect to the wireless access point that it broadcasts, put in your Wi-Fi credentials, and then you can find it in the WLED app. I actually use this controller under my bathroom vanity with some side emitting LEDs to make a nice underglow. And since it has a microphone, it can react with sound. I made a video about how I'm using this LED strip in my smart bathroom video. So I'll put a link to that in the description. You should check it out. This third one from Atom is one of the smallest that I've seen. It really reminds you of some of those magic home controllers that you see on Amazon or you use before you found out about WLED. It's got two connectors, an addressable strip connector on one end and a barrel jack on the other. The body of the sensor has a button to toggle the strip on and off, but this one has no relay, so it's just telling the pixels not to display anything, but power is still active to the strip. This controller can only take five volts or 12 volts DC input, and it's made for two types of strips, five volt WS2812B strips and 12 volt WS2811 strips. It has a two amp maximum current, and because of this and the underpowered processor, you really can't use it with a super long LED strip, but it is great for small projects like the Happy Birthday Home Assistant party hat I made. I also don't think it has a built-in fuse, so that's something to consider and you really wanna keep it for small projects only. 
Setting this one up is no different than the previous two. Again, it broadcasts an access point. You're going to connect to that, input your credentials, and go ahead and find it in the WLED app. I was also able to update this one via Home Assistant with no issues. This next one is actually a brand new controller from Atom, and I haven't had a chance to really test it out. It actually just arrived a few days before I'm releasing this video, but I want to go over some of its features because it is a nice plug and play controller. This one is called the Atom LS 3P, and it's this tiny little controller that is powered by USB-C. On the top, you can see that it's got a clicky little button, and that button is used for turning the LED strip on and off. It has a built-in three-wire connector for three-wire strips, and it's only supporting five-volt strips. So you have the USB power supply supplying five volts, and that's going to be passed right through to the LED strip. Now, there is no internal relay on this strip, nor a fuse, so it's passing it right through, but this thing does have an ESP32 in it, meaning you should be able to handle some decent lighting effects, although the number of LEDs is going to be limited by how much current your USB-C power supply can supply. Now, I don't know what the current limit is on this. It's still pretty new, so I can't tell you that, but I hope to do some more testing on this and see if it becomes my favorite LED controller. Anyway, when it comes to my favorites at the end of this video, I really won't be including this one in the running because I haven't tested it for that long. Next, we have this controller from SM Light, which is a Ukraine-based company. This one is also pretty small for what's in it, and you can tell they purposely designed this as small as they could. It's ESP32 based, which is really nice, and it has four output terminals, the three typical for an LED strip, and another labeled IO17, which I assume is probably for clock if you want to set it up that way. On one end, you can see how it can be powered with a USB-C cable, which is really cool. On the side, you can also see that it has an IR receiver, so you could program an IR remote to it to control it that way. They also say that it has a sensor button, but I'm not really sure what that even is. It also has a barrel jack on the other side for DC power. It takes 5 to 24 volts DC and has a max current of 10 amps. Now, I don't think this device has any fuse or relay inside of it, meaning power is just passed right to the LED strips, and there's nothing to check that current if it gets too high. This may be a safety concern, so I'd suggest that you have some sort of fuse externally in your LED setup. Now, this device also has a microphone, and it's running the sound reactive version of WLED. Again, this means you can't update it directly via Home Assistant, or it's going to wipe out that sound reactive version, and you'll be back to the regular version. I really like that this one is so small, yet has so many features in it, and it can be powered by USB-C, which is a really nice bonus. And it also says that it supports ESP Home. This doesn't mean that it also is running ESP Home along with WLED, but you could instead flash ESP Home on it instead of WLED, which to me defeats the purpose of buying a WLED controller in the first place. I really wouldn't recommend that, and if I were them, I'd wipe that off the list as one of the features. This next one is the GLED Opto or GLED Opto controller, and it's similar to some of the Atom controllers. It has spring terminals for 5 to 24 volts DC, but it also has a barrel jack if you want to go that way. On the other side, it has two LED strip outputs, so you can control two with a maximum of 800 LEDs and a max current of 10 amps between the two. It also has a button on the top that you can use to control the relay that provides power to both outputs. There's a little status LED on the top as well, and that's pretty much it. Now this one is running an ESP8266, not an ESP32, so even though it's got two channels for output, it certainly wouldn't be able to handle sound reactive WLED, but it's not running that. It's definitely a nice little controller for some basic projects, but I wouldn't go crazy with any major pixel displays. If you compare this one to the Atom LS4P, the two outputs is nice, but it only has a 10 amp maximum current, where the Atom had a 16 amp max, meaning you can control more LEDs with the Atom than you could with this. This one. The domestic automation controller looks kind of complex, but it's pretty simple and it just gives you some modular features, which I'll explain. It has an LED strip connector built right into it, so it could easily supply a strip without any soldering, which is really nice for those of you who like plug and play beginner controllers. It has a barrel jack also for 5 volts DC input, and that's all it takes. There's no 24 volt or 12 volt. It has a set of output terminals if you want to power something else, and it also has an RJ12 jack. The idea with this jack is that you can use it to expand the functionality of this device. Let me show you what I mean. You can use this jack with an RJ12 cable to connect a push button or an IR sensor and use those sensors 
with the WLED firmware to kind of automate your controller. You can even add an illuminance sensor, which is really cool. It runs on an ESP8266, which isn't high powered, but that's not necessary, especially for a controller like this. You'll also see these two LEDs that are lit up on the board here. And those LEDs can actually be used as sacrificial pixels in the WLED software to boost your data signal. Those aren't really necessary in most controllers because they'll have a logic level shifter. And actually the newer version of this controller that I didn't buy has one instead of those LEDs. It has a built-in fuse and a relay though, which are really good things to have. If you wanna see a full guide on how this thing works, how to add motion sensors, push buttons, aluminum sensors, go ahead and check out Chris Maher's video, which I'm gonna leave link in the description. By the way, if you haven't seen Chris Maher's videos, you have to check them out. He does tons of WLED and LED lighting videos, and they are some excellent guides, especially his basics video on soldering. Chris also covers a sound reactive version of the same controller. While I do like the fact that you can add these externals, I don't like that it doesn't have a case because your project really isn't polished off until you've added a case. This means that you're gonna have to 3D print one and it kind of takes away from the plug and play feel of this device. Quinn LED makes a ton of different controllers, but we're gonna look at two of them in this video and some more in the next video. The first one is the most basic, the Dig to Go, which is powered by a USB-C port, so you can connect it up pretty easily, even though it can only handle a maximum of three amps, limited by built-in fuses. On the other side, it has a jack for a three-wire connector, which is also provided, allowing you to easily connect an LED strip with no soldering or screw terminals. Nice and clean. It has two exposed four-pin headers for additional things like sensors, but it has a built-in IR receiver and a microphone, as you can see on the top. All these features make it a really versatile little controller. Now it has the basic version of WLED installed on it, but you can install the sound reactor version if you want because it's running an ESP32. Because it's running the standard version of WLED, it can be updated via Home Assistant without any issues. Pretty sweet. The next one is an oldie but a goodie, and it was my first ever WLED controller and my first ever project using WLED. This one is called the Quinn LED Dig Uno. And while this video is covering basic WLED controllers, this one is probably the furthest from basic and the closest to DIY just because of the different things you can do with it. It has a single channel LED output and two screw terminals to take five to 24 volts DC. Actually, there's a second data output, so you technically could control two LED strips sharing the same power terminals. From what I read on the website, it should be able to handle 15 amps, but it only has a 10 amp fuse on it, so I'd probably limit it there. If you do want a case for this one, you can 3D print one yourself, or you can buy one from the Quinn LED shop. This one can also be updated easily via Home Assistant, which is really nice, simple, and easy to do. So for testing these devices, I actually used a variable power supply, and I tested them using five volts, 12 volts, and 24 volts, depending on what they say they're capable of running. I tested them at five volts using this neon rope light that I've showed in a previous WLED video, and I didn't have problems with any of them. They all worked fine. Next, I used this WS2811 Cobb LED strip, as well as these WS2811 pixel bullets to test each of these at 12 volts. This worked fine for all of them, except for the wires on these pixel bullets are kind of thick and they couldn't fit into the tiny terminals of the SM light controller. They literally have made these terminals so small that you can't fit standard wires into them. This actually makes me really dislike this controller despite the features because they've tried to make it so small that it's actually a pain to use. Anyway, once I did get those 12 volt cob lights hooked up to it, it actually worked fine with no issues controlling the 12 volt LED strip. Lastly, I tried them all at 24 volts using this 24 volt cob LED strip. And this is where I had some issues. Both the SM light controller and the GLED opto controller had issues at 12 volts and the LED strip would flash erratically and I couldn't control brightness or anything like that. Thinking I had damaged the strip, I then went back and tried the Dig Uno as well as some other ones and they had no issues. So there's something really wrong with the SM light and the GLED opto at 24 volts. If you're still watching, thanks for sticking around to the end. Now it's time to go over my favorites and my least favorites. For my favorites, I'll tell you what I liked about them and why I chose those controllers over the others. And for my least favorites, I'll tell you why I wouldn't really recommend them for most situations. Since these controllers are all pretty basic and they all just control an LED strip pretty much, I'm gonna start with the two best budget options. These are the Atom LS2812B 
for small projects and the Atham LS4P for medium sized projects. I love the plug and play nature of the LS2812B and for short runs, it's definitely worth the price. I can even see this used for some battery powered options like something in your car. The LS4P is great for medium sized projects where you aren't powering a ton of LED matrices or anything like that because it is limited by the ESP8266, but it can handle 60 amps, which is quite a bit. My favorite sound reactive controller is probably the Atom LS8P because it not only has a microphone, but it also has dual channel output and actual relay for cutting power to the LEDs. It's rocking an ESP32 and it's packaged really nice. You don't have to add anything to it. You can just start using it. If we're talking about the best dual channel controller, I think you can't go wrong with the GLED Opto because although it has an ESP8266, it can handle a decent number of LEDs and it's really easy to use because it has spring terminals instead of screw terminals. That being said, it did have issues running 24 volt LED strips, so it might be something to consider if you're trying to run those. Now what's really cool about dual channel outputs is the fact that they can actually treat both outputs as if they're connected together. You can see with these two triangular panels how they act as if they're all one panel connected together, even though it's two different outputs. This applies to all dual channel outputs and it's really a function of the WLED software, but it's pretty cool. The best DIY style controller in my opinion, is of course the Quinn LED Did You Know. This is because you can get an optional temperature sensor to add to it, and there are six GPIO pins available for additional sensors and whatever you want to do with it. If you're running a medium sized pixel matrix, maybe like a 64 by 64, this may be the way to go because it does have an ESP32, so you could run sound reactive with a 64 by 64 without any issues. However, I'm gonna cover better options than this for some of these pixel matrices in the next video. All right, so my least favorite has to be the SM Lite controller. And I hate to say that because I actually really like it at the same time. However, the tiny features, but then excluding a relay and a fuse, really take it down a notch in my book. And the fact that I had to fight with those terminals is just gonna be a pain for what we'd call a basic controller. I think there are some really great features about it, like the USB-C power and just everything they've packed into it. But in my opinion, make it a little bit bigger and have a little better features. The next one I don't really like is the domestic automation controller, mostly because of the price. Now that's because I run Home Assistant, so I do all my automations there because WLED integrates great with Home Assistant. But if you don't have an automation platform of your own, this could be a good option for getting some motion sensory and push button controls. Now the last one I'm gonna say I don't recommend, you might get a little mad because I've already recommended it and it's the Did You Know. And my problem with it is when you look at the price, the fact that it has no case and that it's meant for medium sized projects, if we're talking about basic LED controllers, that's not the one I'd go with. Now again, as you get more advanced, this is the one for you. Another thing I don't like, and it's something I guess I didn't show earlier, but if you wanna access the terminals for connecting an LED strip, you actually have to pull off the fuse, then you have to pull off the ESP32, and now you have access to those screw terminals. That makes it a pain, especially for someone who's a beginner, and maybe they're a little afraid to take something apart. It's just not something you wanna to have to do. So that's the reason why I'm saying I wouldn't recommend it as a basic WLED controller. Anyway, I know I'm gonna hear it in the comments from you guys about this one, but I gotta say, thanks for sticking around, and that's pretty much it for this comparison. Do me a favor and hit the like button if you like this video, and if you didn't, still hit the like button. Don't forget that I have part two of this comparison where I feature a bunch of advanced controllers and you do not wanna miss it. So hit subscribe and get the bell on so you'll be notified when that one comes out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of these controllers and if there's any that I missed. Anyway, thanks for watching, see ya.